Exothermic and Endothermic Reaction Profiles by kscience.com An exothermic reaction profile explains how an exothermic reaction causes the temperature of the surroundings to increase. So here I'm drawing the y-axis and the x-axis. Progress of reaction goes on the x-axis and you can think of this as being time and heat energy goes on the y-axis. On any reaction profile, the first line always represents the reactants and the second line always represents the products. On an exothermic reaction profile, the line continues from the reactants going upwards and then it goes back down to the products. The small hump is known as the activation energy. Energy was absorbed from the surroundings to break the bonds between the reactants to get the reaction going. This happens in every chemical reaction. Every chemical reaction needs the activation energy to be achieved for the reaction to start. From this red line to this red line shows how much energy was absorbed from the surroundings. We can represent this using the arrow, and this is the activation energy. This is the minimum amount of energy required to start a reaction. An exothermic reaction profile can easily be identified using some characteristic observations. Notice how the reactants are higher up than the products. This is very characteristic for an exothermic reaction profile. This is because the reactants store more energy and the products store less energy. So we show this on the reaction profile as the reactants being higher up and the products being lower down. And the activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to start. The activation energy is found on both exothermic and endothermic reaction profiles. On an exothermic reaction profile, it's a much smaller hump and it can be recognized as the difference in energy between the reactants and the top of the hump. So that's from where the reactants are up to the top of the hump. This is the activation energy. The activation energy is equal to the total energy in. This is the energy absorbed from the surroundings to break the bonds between the reactants to get the reaction going. From the top of the red line down to the products is the total energy out. This represents how much energy was released when the new bonds were being made in the products. This is measured from the top of the hump to the products. Notice how the reactants store more energy and the products store less energy. So where has this energy gone? Well, the energy has been released into the surroundings, causing the temperature of the surroundings to increase. And we can measure this overall energy change using a very simple equation. Overall energy change equals total energy in, take away total energy out. So from the reactants down to the products is the overall energy change. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. An endothermic reaction profile explains how an endothermic reaction causes the temperature of the surroundings to decrease. So here I'm drawing the same axes. On the x-axis is the progress of reaction and on the y-axis is heat energy. Just like the exothermic reaction profile, the first line represents the reactants and the second line represents the products. And here I'm drawing the activation energy, which goes up from the reactants and then is a hump above the products and then goes back down to the products. From the reactants to the top of the hump is the activation energy. Remember, every chemical reaction has an activation energy, but it's the activation energies of endothermic reactions which are bigger than exothermic reactions. So in an endothermic reaction, 
the reactants store less energy and the products store more energy. We can clearly see this because the products are higher up compared to the reactants. So an endothermic reaction profile can be recognized by the reactants being lower down, the products being higher up, and the activation energy hump being much bigger. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So the activation energy is always equal to the total energy in. And remember, the top of the hump going down to the products is always equal to the total energy out. So to calculate the overall energy change, this is overall energy change equals total energy in take away total energy out. From the reactants to the products is the overall energy change. This is a positive energy change as the products are storing more energy than the reactants. We're now going to summarize the differences and similarities between exothermic reaction profiles and endothermic reaction profiles. Exothermic reaction profiles show how the reactants store more energy than the products, whereas endothermic reaction profiles show how the products store more energy than the reactants. There is a smaller activation energy in an exothermic reaction as shown above and there's a bigger activation energy in this endothermic reaction as shown above. There's a negative overall energy change in exothermic reactions as the products store less energy compared to the reactants and there's a positive overall energy change in endothermic reactions as the products store more energy compared to the reactants. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com and don't forget to like and subscribe.